I rise today to speak with great concern to talk about the bloated budget that President Biden has put forward and really what it says about his vision for the future of our country. Because a, a budget is a vision. As my Republican colleagues and I will highlight today, this budget is just the latest addition in his tax and spend agenda. It also fits the standards my colleagues on the other side of the aisle have set by passing inflation causing deficit raising legislation like the Inflation Reduction Act and the American Rescue Plan. Let me make one thing perfectly clear. This budget has no chance of becoming law. And that is the good news here and great news for our constituents back home because this misguided proposal would saddle American families with more taxes, more waste, more debt, and more government in intrusion that our constituents just do not deserve. The bad news is, at least for this administration, is that the unveiling of this budget shines a spotlight on the priorities of the president. His administration and his party, this should alarm all of us. Case in point, $6.8 trillion proposal has been released at a time when so many Americans are struggling to afford basic necessities. Interest rates are soaring. Our national debt is climbing at an alarming rate, and small businesses are struggling to make ends meet. While the Biden administration and our Democrats on the other side of the aisle expect families to make concessions in their everyday lives, like spending less at the grocery store, putting off buying your first home, or purchasing an electric vehicle to avoid rising gas prices. They're attempting to spend nearly seven trillion with a T of hard-earned taxpayers' dollars, pile on our national debt, and massively expand the scope and authority of federal agencies like the IRS, which they massively expanded just several months ago. So what exactly is President Biden's tax and spend proposal? Let's dig in just a little bit. President Biden makes his priorities clear with his proposed changes to base discretionary funding for federal agencies. That's the baseline. The Environmental Protection Agency, which has a lot, I have a lot uh, to do with this agency because it comes right into my committee uh, in the Environment and Public Works, gets a staggering the most of any other agency, 19% increase in funding, year to year. But the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Transportation, remember, Homeland Security is the one that deals with immigration and the crisis at the southern border and the flow of drugs and other things. And the Small Business Administration, where in my state, if you don't grow as a small business, you're not growing. They're all facing budget cuts. The White House priorities could not be clearer. And when it comes to taxes under this budget proposed by the president, Main Street, mom and pop businesses would feel strain like never before. You know, we just lowered, we just lowered the taxes in our state. And it's the biggest tax cut ever in the state of West Virginia. And yet we're looking at taxes on small businesses, capital gains taxes, corporate tax rate goes up, taxes on American energy, retirement taxes go up. The Medicare tax would increase, and the personal income tax would, re would go up for the highest level in decades. What President Biden fails to realize is that the brunt of his tax hikes would be felt by those who own, invest in, or operate small and medium businesses. Maybe that's why he doesn't put any extra money in the Small Business Administration, which is a direct, this is a direct ref uh, reflection and violation of his pledge to not raise taxes on small businesses. The National Federation of Small Business issued a statement last week warning that the tax increase, and, and it's called uh, the National Federation of Small Businesses, are small businesses. They say, quote, this would further harm Main Street. It would, quote, quote, crush Main Street's ability to grow and create jobs. The National Federation of Small Businesses believes that the Biden administration should increase focus on policies that will, and I quote here, Provide certainty, promote economic growth to allow our small businesses to create jobs and raise wages. My Republican colleagues and I could not agree more. It is my hope that the President and Congressional Democrats will continue working 
on previously bipartisan tax issues that spur innovation and are pro-growth. Just last week, as I said, our state passed historic tax cuts, signed into law by our governor, Governor Justice, in the Mountain State. I wish our federal government was following this example. Instead, President Biden has chosen a different path than an analysis analysis from the Tax Foundation found would create negative effects on savings, investments, and have the economy have wide repercussions. The analysis continues that this brazen increase in taxes would ultimately harm our workers, international competitiveness, and domestic investment. We talk about international competitiveness all the time. Why? Why are we trying to move in a direction where our competitiveness would be uh, less effective. In short, moving top tax rates in the United States beyond international norms reduces our economic growth. So you might ask yourself, does the spending ever stop under President Biden and this budget? Well, ironically, it does when you look at our own Department of Homeland Security, which secures our interior of our nation. Uh, it's facing a budget cut under this proposal. The president has consistently said that his budget is a reflection of his priorities. We see millions of people coming across our southern border with no deterrence. But something, nothing runs more true that this is his priority, is to continue that practice, and that the refusal and inability to secure our border and stop the scourge of illicit drugs from entering our communities is not the priority of this administration. The President's budget requests 350 new border agents, less than a 2 percent increase in our agents, while our border runs rampant with illegal crossings and policies like Title 42 move closer to sunset. This budget proposes a contingency slush fund. Nothing taxpayers like better than a slush fund. A slush fund for surge capacity at the border. In other words, give me the money now because I know we're going to have more people coming over and I want to have the money to pay for it in advance because I don't want to come back to Congress to pay for it because Congress knows we have a problem and they won't give me the money to pay for it in an emergency, so I'm going to get it up front. It would be impossible for DHS to use this funding to mitigate the crisis at our border because by the time they receive this as I said, receive these dollars, these illegal crossings would have already occurred. We all have priorities. President Biden has made his clear. Securing our southern border is just not one of his priorities. We see clearly President Biden's priorities yet again when it comes to military spending. We just had a drone shot down yes, yesterday, I believe, by the Russians in the Black Sea. The, budget, the President's budget shortchanges defense for more reckless spending. It's just a 3% increase, 3.2% increase in our military and national security. This comes at a time that inflation in the president's economy is high and our dollars are stretched thinner and thinner. We hear about supply chain. We hear about uh, different um, materials that we can't get and how much more expensive they are and how much longer the wait is. So advers adversaries overseas increase their defense budgets. Now is not the time for us to delay that much modernization and reinforcements that we've been put ourselves on a pathway for over the last several years. Now's the time to invest. Invest in the advanced capabilities and the industrial base ca capacity that we expect to need for our future, for our future generations, and make national security a priority. According to the President's budget proposal, our addiction epidemic doesn't seem to be a top priority either. The President's proposed budget summary lacks a sense of urgency around this epidemic and the fentanyl crisis. A crisis my state and the President's, Madam President, your state as well, all states, my state has been disproportionately impacted by this. In the budget summary, fentanyl is only mentioned twice, opioids mentioned four times, climate change mentioned 42 times. 42. In 2022, West Virginia lost 1,135 West Virginians to fentanyl overdoses. Well, we lost it to overdoses, many of those fentanyl overdoses, a large majority. President Biden, I implore you to put more emphasis on the issues facing our communities on the streets every day that deserve to be our national priorities. This budget proposal from the Biden administration makes obvious 
the motivations and priorities of the White House and the agencies. In Washington, clarity comes at a premium price, so I'll give them credit for that. But by touting this budget proposal and claiming that it cuts the deficit by raising taxes shows that no matter what, the Democrats aren't interested in cutting spending. I mean, put yourself in the country's shoes as a family. What do you do when you see your credit cards maxing out and, and times are getting tough? What do you do? You pull back. You stop spending. However, you can do that in your own home. My Republican colleagues and I stand in direct opposition to what the president is doing with his budget. So, though my remarks on the floor today and the subsequent speeches by my fellow Republicans, will con we will continue to highlight the errors in the president's budgets. We will also stress the need to strike balance, restraint, and regular order. What does regular order mean to, to, to people who are watching this? That means we go through committees and we compromise and we talk to uh, Republicans and Democrats and get together the Madam President and I are on the Appropriations Committee. She's the chair, I'm the, I'm the ranking member. We're gonna do a lot of talking during this process and that's what we need to do. As, and so I intend to fulfill my obligations uh, on the Appropriations Committee and uh, hopefully we can get to this regular order. But right now we need to set priorities in a budget and a spending plan that reflects the real needs we see every day on every street in this country. Thank you.